as the world begins to open up again, we begin to change our lives and all of us are going through so many, I, let me start again. As the world, okay. As the world begins to open up again, we are all going through so many changes. How do we continue to stick to a healthy lifestyle? Hello, and welcome to Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. My guest today is experiencing helping people reach their goals. Her name is Jane Dye, and she is a registered nurse and a holistic health coach. Jane, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Robin, for having me. Pleasure Just give here. us a quick overview of your background. Well, I'm a registered nurse and, as you said, a certified holistic health coach. I'm also a member and the senior vice president of the Charleston Metro, a, chamber, a holistic chamber of commerce. So after years of working in hospital-based psychiatric nursing, I transitioned to coaching to provide health and wellness programs, focusing on lifestyle change by founding my own company called Presido Inc. So I offer private and group coaching programs to clients throughout the United States. We begin the process with initial consultation. Um, I was the former director of, nurse of, of nursing and medical training for a national healthcare company, Health Management Resources, where I work with physicians and nurses as well, helping large groups in the hospital programs around health and wellness. So now You're I busy. <laughs> I am. You know, the real thing here, Robin, is that I found when you help someone see their world differently, um, see their challenges as gifts, um, their world changes so they show up differently and they create results that they may have felt was you know unimaginable and or speaking of changes we've you know through covid and having to quarantine and now things are opening up again people almost got used to staying home all the time and wearing their sweatpants and now mm -hmm. things are starting to change again so we need to be able to adjust that, but we also want to live a healthy lifestyle. You know, once we start to get on the move again, people start picking up fast food or they start eating a little differently or they maybe don't exercise, whatever it is. So how do we, where do we start? When you have a client come to you and they say, you know, I want to improve my health or I want to improve my energy. How do we start? Well, first we need to understand that you human beings are creatures of habit. So, so much of what you think, you say, and you do is a result of habits that are firmly established in your mind and body through years of repetitive behavior. So the habits you possess can either move you forward or set you back in your health and happiness. So the state and the quality of your life is a direct reflection of your daily habits. So if you're feeling stuck, in a rut, stressed, unhealthy, or lack energy, you may be what's standing in your way of feeling your best. So what we want to do is crowd out harmful habits from your life by focusing on the positive behaviors um, that you can add into your life that create a healthier and happier you in body, mind, and spirit. So it's not so much what we take out, it's really what we add in. Give us an example of a client, a, a typical client. I know everyone's different, but someone who comes to you and, and just says, I just can't seem to do X. Where mm -hmm. do you start with that? Well, where we start again, as I said earlier, is in, with an initial consultation. We really get clear on what somebody's vision is for their health and happiness, what they've done in the past that's been successful. Really find out what is enjoyable in their life. How do we add that in? Because we, it's not only the food we eat, but it's our healthy relationships, our fulfilling work and career, our physical activity or movement, and our spiritual awarenesses or practices that really fill up our life. So first, we really want to understand where somebody's at. And of course, just like if you take a road trip, where do you want to go? Then we're able to see what habits we can build upon, how we're able to slowly create change, because big issues require small changes, and small changes take care of big issues. So we look where we can make change the easiest. We look at the environment. We see what people are doing and what we can add on to. So... One of the areas I know that you focus on is people developing more energy in their lives, able to accomplish their goals or desires or wishes, whatever you want to call it. And that can often be difficult when you're pulled in many directions, especially now if people are starting to go back into work again and they're 
their kids are around. You know, it's, it's, it's a very tough t- thing to be able to do that sometimes. So what are some of the, what's some of the advice that you give to do that? Well, well some of the things is the things that we change together slowly over time. So I'd like to break it up into three periods of the day. We have things we can do in the morning, things in the afternoon and things in the evening, really practical ways to help create more energy and more vitality in your life. The first would be starting the morning technology free. I know everybody's going to gasp, but what do we all do? We reach for our phone, <laughs> yes. for our computer. First our thing. First thing. So the problem with that is we, it cultivates like a reactive mindset. So mm-hmm. instead of a relaxed and proactive one. Um, so you want to start the day of a place in inner peace and control, not in defensive stance. So we want to use at least the first few minutes of the day to greet the day with some present moment awareness, a little gratitude for the day ahead which will probably lead to a smile. And when you smile, believe it or not, it signals your brain to release feel-good neurotransmitters, which lift your mood, relax your body, and lower your heart rate. So it's really a great way to start the day. And it only has to be a few minutes. Um, If you could add more time into that, 15, 20 minutes, great. But we want to start small. Even if it was one minute, it would probably be something that shifted your day just because you're mindful about it. One of the key things you want to do after sleeping a long, through the long night, is to hydrate ourselves. So drinking a glass of water in the morning is an important first step to being well hydrated. About 85% of our chronic medical conditions are related to dehydration. Um, And it really is a great way to start your day and improve your metabolism, your digestion, and, and just and that, how simple is that to do? Drink a glass of water in the morning, but really? Sometimes you do have to break it down, though, because if somebody's not in that habit, where are you going to get your water? Are you going to keep a glass by the, the sink uh, in your kitchen or after, you know, by your bedroom sink? Where do you want to do that? Is that glass out? Do we have a nice cold pitcher of water if you like cold water? Room temperature is probably best in the morning, but that's okay. If you like it cold, have it cold. It's better than not having a glass of water. Sure. But it's a way to set us up to, to, to feel really good. Something as simple as making your bed. It might seem really small, but it's a simple action you can take to start your day feeling you've accomplished something right away and just simplifying when you look around your room in your environment to feel ready to take on the day. Yes. Again, maybe some breathing techniques, meditation for those who like to prayer. Incorporating that early in the morning just really centers you and it can influence. Can I talk to you about meditation? Because, you know, someone like my husband, I go, meditation, what's meditation? You know, (laughs) just like people sometimes don't really get it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, what, some people think of, you know, a guru sitting on top of a mountain meditating. That is not the case because I've, I've studied this a lot myself. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about what actually is meditation and how can we get there? And, and you don't, again, don't need Mm -hmm. 20, 30 minutes. You can do it for a few minutes. Absolutely. The the whole idea of meditation is to quiet the mind and allow thoughts to flow while you focus on some inner state. So the easiest way to focus on meditation is to focus on breathing. Okay. So what you do when you're doing it, you can set your intention for the day. You can get clear on what you want to feel, what you want to accomplish. Tends to make better choices because you feel more focused and less scattered when you start. And it can be done, as you said, any time of day for any length of time. So if people are confused how to do this, simply you can get comfortable in a seated position, close your eyes, which help you go in. You may even want to touch your heart space to just get the sense that we're going in and focus on your breath. Mm -hmm. Inhale for a count of five, just pause at the top. Exhale for a count of five and pause at the bottom. There are other techniques as well, but doing that simply for even 30 to 60 seconds will, will stimulate a relaxation response so that you're clearer. And, and the great thing about it, if you wander to thoughts, thoughts come and go. Think of them like clouds. Just let them go. But you can set an intention. This is how I want to show up for today. This is what's really important for me to accomplish. Absolutely. You, timer, you know, if mm-hmm. you really don't know what to do. Or one of the best ways if you're new to meditation is to use one of the many wonderful meditation apps that are out there so you can set a little bit of time. One of my favorites is Insight Timer. Um, It's free. Um, You can take classes there too. They have beginners. It could be, honestly, there are one minute meditations on there. So if somebody wants a little guidance, it's a really easy way to understand meditation. And one of the greatest things I heard from a meditation teacher whose name escapes me at the moment, 
is that the goal of meditation isn't to be a good meditator. The goal of meditation <laughs> is to have a better life. Right. And doing that by accessing that, that state of relaxation, which is something that we need to cultivate to meet the demands. Uh, what a great way. And that's a great way to start your day with, with some clear thoughts of, okay, where am I going? What am I doing today? Some people just get up and just go. And it's almost like rote. It's just what they've done, you know, every single day and without actually giving it much thought. And as you said, habits, what do we, why would we reach for that cup of coffee? Because we've always reached for that cup of coffee or whatever it might be in mm -hmm. the morning. And so we should really think that through and exactly, you know, exactly what we intend to do. And that can make all the difference right there. And the intention can be so small. It doesn't have to be complicated. You can your intention could be, I just want to live today with a little more flow and ease. I want to take a moment to take a breath and we're going to talk more about those types of habits. So one of the things you could also do in the morning that I love to do is engage in some sort of enjoyable physical activity. Now, it doesn't have to be a workout at the gym, doesn't have to be complicated, long, you know, intense workout, but just something. You could literally just be walking around your home. You could climb the stairs or you could do what I do is put some music on and, you know, like dance while I get ready for my day, <laughs> you know, and again, it just puts a smile on your face and, and you just feel energized. Um, you want to spend a little time on your grooming. As you mentioned, we've spent a lot of months, you know, huddled in our houses. You put a little time and effort into your peers. It really does build your self-confidence. You know, you really want to dress for success and be mindful and happy. Yes, when I saw people day. online during quarantine. They're like, yeah. I just did my makeup and hair today. <laughs> I'm not going to see anyone, but I just needed to do it. I wanted Absolutely. to see myself look, looking yeah. normal. <laughs> that's wonderful because when you do that, it is a way of taking care of yourself, your health. It makes you feel put together. And it makes you Absolutely. Feel one uh, that you've heard probably your whole life and probably mostly from your mom was that you should have a healthy breakfast. Um, when you eat a healthy breakfast, it really needs to consist of whole nutrient dense foods with a little protein, complex carbohydrates, fiber, and good fats. What that will do is give you more energy uh, in the morning and throughout the day for better focus. Um, it also kickstarts your metabolism for better weight management. Uh, but if breakfast is not for you, just consider when you do finally break the fast of not eating, of having that type of, of meal, something really nourishing, not necessarily, you know, donut and a cup of coffee, yeah. you know, um, which will give you a burst real quick, but probably have you crash and feeling de-energized. And again, consider a really short to-do list, like your top priorities, like those three to five things you got to get done and everything's like bonus, you know, because that helps us clear a little of that mental chatter. So you see the progress always go through your day and then you feel energized like, oh, I got those things done. So what's next? I can take something more on. I took a time management course once and it was, it was wonderful. One of the things they call, they talked about and is similar to what you're saying is planning and solitude for 10 minutes in the morning and just write down a few things or if you wanted to do it at night whenever whatever works for you just to have a little bit of focus and here's what i want to accomplish today a lot of people do that for work but mm -hmm. to just do it in your regular life can really uh, help and it's so cool. fun to check it off the list that just makes you feel good exactly. you've accomplished something you know and as we move into the afternoon that's a perfect example because a lot of people experience low energy in the mid-afternoon yes it's demotivating it causes us to be less productive and feel low so taking that break like you're talking about if, for a healthy lunch would be great if it could be away from your desk and giving yourself the the gift of eating in a relaxed state so um, if you're not taking a lunch break or haven't it's something you want to begin even if it's 10 minutes maybe you can expand it to 15 and we want to take a few of those nice long slow breaths before we eat so we can stimulate a relaxation response, slow down, enjoy the food, and, and digest it better so that we, we are, are you know, able to have the energy that the food's meant to give us. That is a good point because I know I have read a million times, try to shut down your devices when you're eating. So many people are on their phone, watching TV, do, sometimes both, <laughs> you know, on a computer. And what happens is we don't even realize what we're putting into our mouth. And that can really create overeating or eating the foods that we don't want to eat. So that's a really, that's a good tip, slow down, and just chill out. <laughs> and also with slowing down, when you're eating really fast, you're gulping in a lot of air, it leads to indigestion. I mean, it's hard to go back to work feeling that way. Yes. You know? 
going about anything you do. So that whole slowing down gives our brain the signal that we're getting full so we don't overeat. And we just can really enjoy, savor the food. I mean, chewing, for example, is one of the best things you can do to just slow down and just enjoy your food more. Thank Absolutely. You. Well, that's one thing that I did find. I kind of, I mean, if there was any silver lining during COVID, which, you know, no no one would have wanted it if we had a choice. Right. But I did find that I cooked more. I was home more. So I did a lot more of my own meal prep. And when you control your own meal prep, you, you, you control the ingredients, you know what's in it. It makes it a lot easier to eat healthy. No question about it. In fact, I work with a lot of men and they'll often say to me, I don't cook. So I'll say to them, can you assemble? Because I will teach them <laughs> how to assemble food, you know, and all of a sudden they realize that you really can, whether it be for lunch or whether it be for dinner, that you can save yourself a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of, mo- um, a lot of money. You can actually, and I mean, you really don't want to cook. Fortunately, there are these really great meal prep um, businesses where they'll bring, they'll send the things to home. You still have a better control, as you're saying. Uh, of the ingredients of, you know, what goes into your food? Because oftentimes, as you well know, when we eat out and all, we have no idea. No idea. And they're not concerned about the fat and the calories. They want it to taste good. So you come back. Even the additives. Yes. People might have sensitivities to that. It makes them feel crummy. They don't even know why. They think they ate something healthy. They don't know what other additives are in there. It could be really poor oils, you know, and, and other types of flours and starches and things that, you know, none of us really feel well eating. Absolutely. So we're talking about the afternoon. Did we cover all the tips? Uh, there's a couple of other things that are great. Um, okay. To that point, you know, when, we definitely want to plan for some quiet time, as you do, you discussed, taking that 10-minute mid-afternoon break away from electronics. Maybe it's time to get outside. Maybe if you can, if the weather permits, just connect with nature, take some fresh breaths of air, you know, listen to the birds, just spend a little time in nature, get a little sunshine now that it's the summer. Absolutely. Um, Even, you know, just stretch, you know, raise your arms up, um, do a little journaling, as you said, once again, breathing, meditating, or even just listening to soothing music, something that takes a break. Um, Again, to your point about eating, if you're going to eat out, why don't we try to find some healthy options? Find a new restaurant that has some healthy things. And if nothing else, the one thing you would do at every single meal that would greatly improve your nutritional quality is just add some piece of produce into your meal mm-hmm. where, you know, you're having either a vegetable or a fruit of some sort, and french fries, but um, some mm-hmm. vegetable or fruit that, you know, that you can add to your meal. It will be hydrating. It will give you fiber and lots of natural. I know I've spoken with dietitians before and it's some, I think it's like 90% of Americans or something do not get enough produce and I got mm. get fruits and vegetables, high percentage. Absolutely. We get enough protein. Everybody eats a lot of meat, but not enough pro, uh, vegetables. And I always say, Absolutely. you know, if you really hate it, sneak it into a smoothie. Smoothies are great. People love them. Throw Absolutely. it in there, you know, throw some kale in there. You can't even taste it. But yeah, it's, it's something. And another thing that we've started to do in our family, because we buy fresh produce, which we still do, but we also now buy bags of frozen vegetables. So easy. You pop them in the microwave. It's the easiest thing to do with dinner and they don't go bad. So you exactly. always have And them. those also can be thrown into your smoothie. And the Absolutely. Thing that you always realize that when it comes to eating a new food or trying a food again, maybe that you haven't, it takes like three times, whether you're an adult or a child, <laughs> to actually decide whether you like that food. It may be the preparation. I mean, my husband would never eat Brussels sprouts when they were boiled. I wouldn't either. But when they're broiled, under, under the uh, uh, oven, they become caramelized. They become yes. sweet. So there's lots of sweet roasted vegetables that we can still enjoy all year round, always available, that you can, you know, you can even make a squash or a pumpkin smoothie. It's incredibly delicious, like great, great yeah. opportunity. It just takes a little thinking ahead and prep. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's, and it's today, really not that bad. We have a lot of things. I mean, people yeah. can go into the market and can buy these foods cut up already you know they of course it costs a little bit more but they're available and you know you don't have to do all the prep so getting out a little bit away from food and back into other things that energize us is research showing that having short interactions with people has a positive effect on our health and longevity and when you're going out to lunch or running errands or taking a break interacting with others brings a kind of joy that comes with that micro connection the studies are so 
profound. It may even be more important to our health and wellness than our long-term relationships. Uh, we do exchange a lot in those interactions, both in terms of our emotional frequencies, but even our gut bacteria, they have little conversations while we're uh, with people. That is important. And we miss so much of that during COVID. And, and exactly. I was just reading an article about people who lived alone and how they felt they didn't have anyone to touch or hug and mm -hmm. how difficult that is to, to uh, have that. Because we are, we are, people were social beings we want to be around other people and that so many people felt lonely during uh quarantine and COVID. absolutely and yeah. again in the afternoon two things that we've already discussed taking tech breaks again and staying hydrated yes and as we move into our evening we really want to have a healthy evening routine because that nourishes your mind your body and soul for a restful experience to prepare for restorative night's sleep Sleep is one of my favorite topics. It's one of the most underrated behavior that we have. We live in a culture that really promotes burning it from both ends, mm -hmm. even in COVID. And the fact is sleep is critical to, to restoring our health. In fact, we can't even heal in a state of, of, of stress. We must be in a relaxed state to heal. So you already said it, enjoying a home cooked dinner, uh, eating dinner at an earlier time is really important for digestion. When we eat really late at night, I don't know how the Brazilians do it. You can eat at <laughs> yes, like nine Spanish or nine do it. Nine. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, for me, it, it leads to digestive upset. So um, if you really want to um, have the most energizing meal, and as you know, a lot of cultures, they don't eat their biggest meal at dinner. Yes. Smaller meal, that's a personal preference. But eating it early is always better for digestion. Um, you want to create a nightly bedtime ritual. You want to give the body the signal that it's time to unwind. Once again, I told you this theme is going to come through. Discontinue using your electronics and wind down 30 or 60 minutes before bedtime because screen time will interfere with healthy sleep. If you must be on your screen, get yourself some blue blockers, mm -hmm. glasses that help reduce the blue light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the blue light. Um, you can turn devices down. There are programs on computers. One that I use is F.Lux. It sundowns your computer at sunset. It just it helps to take that blue light, which is the wake, waking light, away from the body so you can develop enough melatonin to go to sleep and stay to sleep. So it could be anything from a hot bath, a cup of hot herbal tea, self-massage, gentle stretching or yoga, light reading, listening to soothing music, meditation and prayer, a, a journaling. All those kinds of things can really help to slow down, get you ready, whatever calls out to you. We could also engage using aromatherapy. So essential oils are lovely to relax, create an environment, a spa environment in your home. So valerian, lavender, roaming chamomile, and lang lang all can be diffused. And my favorite thing of all is practicing gratitude. So just like in the morning, if you take a moment of gratitude to appreciate what went well in mm -hmm. your day before you go to sleep, who did you interact with? What was the thing that really lit you up that day? Research shows that there is a strong correlation that exists between gratitude and happiness. Um, the studies show people who practice gratitude report feeling more optimistic and generally better about their lives. They can also lead to better sleep, healthier relationships, and a stronger immune system, which is just amazing. So the simple practice, whether it's in the day, and or mm -hmm. at night is a great way to wind. Some may call it meditation. Some may call it prayer, whatever way you exactly. want to describe it. But that's, right. So yeah. I've got three, three suggestions for the listeners. If they don't do this already, you can use a gratitude journal. Um, just write down three things you're grateful for before you go to sleep or keep a gratitude jar, jar. You can just like jot things down on small pieces of paper and place them in the jar and you can later review them. Or you can even write a letter of gratitude to a loved one or someone um, for what you appreciate, you know, because the, the fact is that when you're in gratitude, you can't feel like you're in a state of lack. You always feel that you're full. And again, incorporating any of these practices into a daily routine can easily help you shift towards a more energized, happier and healthier life. And really remember that that small change can have such a tremendous impact.
It's all oh, such great tips. And I love what you said about sleep because it is so underrated mm -hmm. in our society. I mean, you, people brag about being so busy, so busy, so busy. That's like a good thing in our world. And it's really not. I mean, it isn't. It's sometimes good to just have some free time, not to have so much on your plate all the time. And, and sleep, I know we're not talking about really weight loss, but some people are probably interested in that. It mm -hmm. is very important to help you lose weight as well, if that's your goal. Well, do you know that if you sleep well, you get the, the four to six cycles of restorative sleep that you need every night that you will weigh five pounds less without doing anything else? There's an incentive right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what it's saying is the body can't be in this heightened state you know, of, 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 of alertness. That's not what energy is. That, that yes. stress, that anxiety, that's not what it is. Energize is like having it so you can go and do whatever you want, being clear and focused having, you know, a, a grateful and positive mindset, you know, um, so you can get more out of your days and enjoy the rest of the night. Such wonderful advice. Jane, where can people reach you if they'd like to have a consultation, work with you one on one? I know you probably work with people via the internet all over. Uh, how can they reach you? The best way to reach me is to go right to my website. It's just my name. So it's Jane K Dye. That's J A N E K D Y E dot com. And there you can go and check out my uh, reviews, testimonials, also see what my approach is. And you can schedule uh, an initial consultation, which is free and have no obligation. The whole goal of initial consultation is to help people to see. Um, what their next step is, whether it's to work with me or not. So we want them to get an appreciation and insight or some sort of aha as to what they can do easily without denial and deprivation to change your life so that it's healthier, happier. You can tell that you are very passionate about this and it is just, it's just a part of your heart. So thank you so much for sharing some great advice, great tips with us. Jane Dye, registered nurse and holistic health coach. We certainly do appreciate your being here. I'll put all the information in the show notes so people will have it so they can reach you. Thank you so much again. Thank you, Robin. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. You as well. And thank you for joining me today for Living Well with Robin Stoloff, empowering you to live a healthier life. Hope to see you again next time. Until then, please stay safe and keep living well.